Hello, my name is Nathalie Lesage, your host here at Faithful Living Home. This week's topic is Shift Your Focus, and this is part one. So I ask you, how do we improve our daily life as born-again Christians? You can make a very important change every single day simply by shifting your focus. It's not complicated. It's simple. But you must take action. Otherwise, nothing will happen. I want to start with a reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 to 12 in the King James Bible version. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Sometimes it feels like we're in the middle of the wilderness. Could be for a day, a week, an entire season of life. And when that happens, we feel wary, unfocused, uh, like we have a foggy brain, just can't seem to, to see things clearly. Uh, no energy or feeling lifeless, frustrated, tired, impatient, and just nothing seems to run smoothly. It's like you're almost like walking in mud, you know? So sometimes we may feel like life is unfair. And no matter how faithful we think we are to God, we seem to be stuck in the desert and struggling. So what happens then? Well, we start to fall into self-pity, sadness, doubt, anxiety, depression, despair, or even anger. Take your pick or all of them, right? The problem is that when we start thinking that way, it's because we're focusing on ourselves instead of focusing on God. Our focus is all wrong. When we focus on oneself, that's the fastest way to get stuck in the mud of the wilderness. And it's the greatest hindrance to breakthroughs. We're not the faithful ones. God is. We're not the steadfast ones. God is. God is always good, all the time. He's faithful and he never wavers. But the key is, is for in order for God to be able to work on us uh, to the fullest extent, we cannot have any unforgiveness in our heart. Think about that for a moment. We first need to understand that in order for us to fully connect with God, we must shift our focus towards eliminating any grudges that we hold towards anyone or towards any situation. We can't benefit from God's full healing grace of, and power if we don't completely clear out our own minds from self-pity talk or if we hold any anger or frustrations in our heart. The enemy tries to keep us focused on ourselves. I call it me, myself, and I, the unholy trinity. It's the unholy trinity of self-importance. Me, myself, and I. 
And that always brings chaos and destruction. We must shift our focus towards God, and it's the only way to stop the enemy. The enemy, as I've mentioned many times before, the battlefield is in the mind. On our own, with our minds and in the flesh, that's not a battle that we can win. Only God, only God can help us through victory. So first step, think about everything that you have negative feelings or frustration towards. Have you experienced the issues in the world today, economically, financially, jobs, is anything? It's, it's pretty chaotic out there. So usually when I see people talking or I talk, you know, with people, comments about, you know, people in power being incompetent or willful tools of agendas and all kinds of things, that brings up a whole bunch of negative feelings and anger and frustration and, and all kinds of things that are not of God. And so, even without thinking about it, or having somebody close to you that hurt you, you're thinking about people that don't even know you that hurt you because of the decisions they make in the country that you're living in. And it affects you. Okay? So if you think about everything that you have negative feelings or f for or frustrations towards and you resolve to change this around by genuinely forgiving people who have hurt you directly or indirectly in some way and letting go of all situations or events that have happened and telling God that you're moving on, that they are forgiven and you're leaving it all to him. Pray for those people. Because these people that hurt other people by their decisions and not wanting to listen to common sense and to proper and having proper discussions, these people are hurting. They likely don't know God. So we need to pray for them. And we need to forgive them. Yeah, that's a hard one. Whoa. <laughs> You feel it? Yeah. <laughs> but how can we expect to be forgiven for our own sins and, and misdoings and all kinds of things that we've done in our life? Because, sorry, but I am not perfect and I'm pretty sure that goes for all of us. How can we expect to be forgiven by God and for Him to do wonderful things with us and through us and to us and and, and in our lives, if we can't extend that forgiveness, complete forgiveness, genuine, towards anybody else or any situation. It's a big one, I'm telling you. So... Make sure, first of all, go through anything that you know that you go, ooh, ooh, that, that touched the button there, you know, and, and go through that. But also, make sure that you pray and ask God to show you if you need to forgive someone or let go of a situation that you might have forgotten or not fully resolved. He will show you. Things will start coming up. Go, oh, that's, you know, it'll come up. But pray about it. Have, have him help you figure out any unresolved issues, any unresolved grudges or bad feelings or, or anything. Excuse me. So that then he can fully work in you and through you. 
Because if we're holding on to these negative things, God is not really fully, like he's there, but he can't fully work if we're holding on tight to stuff that doesn't need to be there. Because this is stuff of the flesh. It is totally irrelevant in the realm of God and in the scheme of things. We are not of this world. Now, secondly, the best thing you can do every single day is to begin declaring who he is in your life. Don't just write it down, but declare out loud who God is in your life every day. Every single thing you need is only found through God. Right? So write these things down and say them out loud every day. And I'll give you some examples that you can jot down, you can pause, what uh, what not. And have it handy. Have it on your phone. Have it as a screensaver. Uh, you know, have it as a reminder on your calendar. But every day. Declare these things out loud. Yahweh, God, is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the creator of all things. He is our almighty God. God is the first and the last. He is your salvation. Yahweh, is the bread of life. He is your counselor, your mentor, your coach, your deliverer. He is a consuming father. He is our everlasting father. God is your redeemer, your healer, your provider. He is the Holy One. He is the great I am. Now, the great I am is not the I was. He's not the I will be. He is in the present, ever present, all the time. The great I am. And that's where you need to stay with him. In the present, not the past. The past is gone. And whatever happened back then, the seasons you've gone through and everything, that doesn't define who you are in God and it doesn't define who you are today or the, who, what you will be tomorrow. Tomorrow is God. He knows. He's the only one that knows the future. But if you know your place and you are with him present in today, then today is going to be an amazing day. Yahweh is Emmanuel, Adonai, Jehovah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Hosts. He is the Messiah and the soon coming King. So shift your focus and you will defeat the enemy. It will change how you live your life moment by moment. And if you refocus it constantly on God, realign yourself constantly, course correct. He is your strength and he is your shield and he will see you through the other side of this valley. Now, thirdly, you must read and meditate on scriptures that address the problems that you are dealing with, either within yourself that you want to improve or situations. But you, Everything is in the Bible. Everything is in his word. 
So follow his teachings and guidance. And the more you read the Bible, the more you hear his voice. Trust God and get closer to him. Now, if you're finding resistance in your mind or in your heart, preventing you from praying or reading the scriptures every single day and focusing on God, that's the enemy's interference in your life. And you must fight it by shifting your focus intentionally only on Yahweh God. He's the only one that has the power to change you and your circumstances. He's the only one that has the power to heal you, both internally and physically. He's the only one that has the power to get you through any situation. But before he can do all that, you must take action by seeking him first every single day. So tonight's message is shorter than usual. But I think it's a really, really important message. Because experiencing him every day intentionally seeking him and declaring who he is in your life out loud makes a big difference and making sure that you're not holding any gremlins and dust bunnies and things that don't belong. Get rid of it. Time for a good cleaning. And just let God come right in fully. Because there's no room for the enemy in there. Clear it all out. Nothing good comes from the enemy. Nothing good comes from worry or fear or anxiety or anger or frustrations or anything like that. Nothing good comes from that because it's not of God. So I pray that you'll work on that and meditate on the word every day. I love you. Have a good night. I will see you on Thursday. May God bless you abundantly.